How far would you drive to go to a monthly match? Welcome back guys, I'm Dead Eye, and today we're covering five tips that I'm using to shoot better in 2020. Cowboy shooting has changed a lot since I started a little over 20 years ago. One of the big changes I've seen is we have a lot more places to shoot, a lot more clubs, and a lot more of them shoot more often. Two, three, and sometimes four times a month. So this is where tip number one comes in. Shoot at new places. Because we have more to choose from, I see a lot of people only shoot at one or two clubs to get all the shooting they need in that month. And while I support the idea of having a home club, the place that's to yours to own, to help with, to help grow, as a competitor, every once in a while, you want to get out of that comfort zone, get out of that same thing. A lot of matches try to diversify themselves in shooting different scenarios each month and changing things up but you're still usually stuck with the same props and the same type of targets and typically you have a, a standard match philosophy and that's a good thing. This year, try to get out there to different clubs that are outside your comfort zone. Those clubs that might have different targets than yours, whether they're closer or they're further, different shapes, different types of props, whether they move differently, further or shorter, Sometimes you don't like stand and deliver, so you don't do them much. Maybe add some more of those in this year. If you don't move much of your club, travel out there to the ones that you're going to have to do some running in. Main thing, remember, is get outside that comfort zone. Getting outside that comfort zone is going to help you with learn more. The new experiences, to push yourself in different ways. And you're not only going to learn from these scenarios or these different match philosophies or ranges you go to, but from the people that you're going to meet. Anybody who knows how to learn can learn something from anybody. So along with making new friends or learning new techniques from them or even shooting ideologies, you might just make yourself a new rival, which leads us into tip number two. <laughs> Ever heard the phrase, iron sharpens iron? Even if you're self-motivated, having a rivalry with a group of people or a person can really help push you to that next level. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for my rivalry with the Creek County Kid. We've become good friends and we still want to see each other shoot well every time. But at the end of the day, we still want to kick each other's ass. So when I say rivalry, I'm not saying you need to go find a person to hate. I mean, if that gets you motivated, they get you motivated. That good-hearted rivalry where you want to see each other shoot well, those are what's going to really help us push further because we are helping each other at the same time as pushing ourselves. Another good rivalry is the one you might have heard of between Witter and Redney. Those guys love to tear it up with those 97s. And I've never seen Redney train harder than he does when he's fixing to go shoot with Witter and those guys up in Tennessee. The Witter and Redney rivalry might not have ever happened if they both hadn't traveled to Hellfire in 2015. Laying right back into traveling, shooting new places to build and find those rivalries to get that next step to push yourself. So speaking of shooting at new places and seeking out competition, what you saw in that intro there was the Texas Ten Horns, a match that's a little over eight hour drive for me. The total in the day, it's four there, four back. But that's about the furthest I've ever driven for a monthly match. And I'm glad I went. I met a bunch of new people there. This little club here, north of Dallas, 
has world class competition. Guys like Rusty Remington, or Hair Trigger Hayes, Colorado Jackson, Nonstop, and more. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about their club, but actually, Kojak would do a much better job of that. So here he is to tell you a little bit about the Texas Ten Horns. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Colorado Jackson. I'm Vice President here of the Texas Ten Horns in Leonard, Texas. We're a little cowboy action club located less than an hour northeast of the Dallas Metroplex. We shoot on the first weekend every month, Saturday and Sunday. We'd love to have y'all come visit. We really enjoyed having Dillard out here today taking some videos. We have a great annual match. It's coming up the first weekend in June. It's our Spaghetti Western. We'll have somewhere around 175 to 200 shooters. We'd love for y'all to come out. You can find all the information about the club on our Facebook page, it's Texas Ten Horns, or on our website, it's TexasTenHorns.com. We appreciate everybody coming out, and we love to see new shooters. So shooting better in 2020, tip number three. Get to know yourself better. So, everybody's abilities are different from day to day. Some days your mind's in a fog, some days you're sharp as a tack. So most of us competitors are pushing ourselves each and every match in different ways. And when we're in that push, most of us are trying to push to where we should be at on good days. If you're off mentally or physically on that day that you're pushing and you don't take that into account, you're going to crash. That crash is usually blamed on pushing and not understanding your own limitations on that particular day. For me, I have a few things that I assess before I shoot my very first stage so that I can try to push myself to my potential on that particular day. First is my mental focus. I try to run the stage several times in my head, usually at the loading table, to try to establish my rhythm or tempo for that stage. And, you know, if I'm off that day and I just really can't get it right in my head at the speed that I want to be at, I've got to kind of back it off a little bit. Now, some days I'm there, I'm as sharp as a tack, and my mental abilities exceed my physical abilities, which is number two. Your physical abilities are probably what change most drastically from day to day. If your hand speed just isn't there that day to what it normally is, and you're trying to push a stage for a new personal record for like a rifle run, a shotgun run, or your pistol runs, well, that's when crashes happen. For me, to get better quality shooting time in, I'm going to back off a little bit to whatever my limitation is that day to ultimately get more good shooting in to help me better in the long run. And the last thing that I assess that I've really been looking at over the last year or so is my eye focus speed. I don't hear this talked about very often, but training and focusing on making your eyes actually focus, like I focus the lens on that camera, but making your eyes focus on what's important throughout the stage can drastically help with your transition consistency, a speed of your shotgunning, and of course hitting your targets. So this year, Seek to understand your potential for each match, and by doing so, you'll shoot more consistently and create better habits that'll translate to faster improvement over time. <laughs> Tip number four is to forgive yourself. No matter how hard you train, how good you are, or even get to know yourself, Mistakes are going to happen. Jacked out rounds, misses, a bad shuck, or even just a bad grip. The best way to recover is to accept it and move on. This is probably one of the hardest things to do during a stage. I see a lot of people really beat themselves up, uh, their mind wander, or they're trying to analyze what happened during the stage. And during the stage, is the wrong time to be doing that. You can analyze what happened or, you know, criticize yourself or whatever you need to do to recover from it 
you know, to not let it happen again after the stage. During the stage, your goal should be to move into what do you have to do next to recover to move on. If you jack out a round, just put the round in, focus on whatever technique you use to do a fast reload, and as soon as you're done, forget it and get right back to your shooting tempo as if nothing had happened. Now, not caring and forgiving yourself are two different things. To me, forgiving yourself is accepting or understanding the fact that you've lost time. And you're not going to get that back. And by dwelling on it, you're only going to cost yourself more time. So tip number five is a big one for me. To stop tinkering with my main match guns when they're in good working order. I've made a lot of improvements to my main match guns over the years, but at some point I got to where I was just trying to push the boundaries and that just led to more breakdowns, which led to less time shooting and less confidence going into a match and more. Now I realize that our guns are all mechanical items and they are going to break at some point, no matter who worked on them, whether it's yourself or the greatest gunsmith in history, they're going to break, especially as hard on them as we are in this sport. But the majority of meltdowns that I see typically come from people trying to push the boundaries on an already good working gun that probably actually felt better than most out there. So going into this 2020 season, you got to ask yourself, do your guns really need to be improved or do you need to work on improving yourself? So to close this thing up guys, I do understand that each and every one of these tips could really be explained a lot more and have a more in-depth analysis of each and every one of them, but this is just a short overview of the things that I'm looking at to really improve myself this year with the amount of time that I get to spend on the range. Like a lot of y'all watching, you know, I've got work and kids and more, so I don't get to shoot as much as I would like to. So when I am out there, it's all about trying to improve myself with the time that I have available. So for 2020, go to new places, meet new people, get to know yourself better, let it go, and get those guns in good working order. I had a good time today shooting with those guys down at the Texas Ten Horns. So if you're around the Dallas area, go check them out. I'll also put the links to their site, their Facebook page, and more down below. And if you like these tips, don't forget to like and subscribe and, well, all that good YouTube stuff. So, thanks for watching, guys. Had a great time shooting with those guys down there. Check them out, and I'll see you in a couple weeks in the next video.